So I've been holding on to this footage for a while and I really, 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 really had to share this with you guys because it's really special, it's really motivating. And I wanted to share with you some parts of my life that you don't always get to see. And one part that really means a lot to me is my friendship with David Wagner, fellow Olympian, fellow Grand Slam champion. And so we had this on the shelf and now I'm gonna let you see this. And I'm wishing him actually the best of luck at the US Open this year. I met David about 10 years ago now, and I was passing by the practice desk at the US Open, and he, you know, I saw him and he says, hey, won't you come to my match? And I never met the guy before in my life. And when he left, I thought about it and I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to the match, why not? So I went over to the match and how incredible. It was amazing to watch him play. And it was amazing to see the athleticism, the determination, and the skill uh, that he had on the court, and that also his opponents. I was moved beyond words. It was a really emotional, emotional moment for me, and that really marked the beginning of our friendship. I have the utmost respect for David. As a tennis player, I know what it takes to put in the work every day, and he does that. He does that, and he's become a champion. I am so motivated by what he achieves and how also he motivates so many people. I don't think he realizes that. I don't think he realizes how much he has motivated me and inspired me and the impact that he's had on this world. I'm really, really happy to call him my friend. I've had a chance to see David play at the Australian Open, at the US Open, and he's a fellow Olympian. And this time at Wimbledon was the first time that the quad division was playing. So me and David caught up to kind of celebrate this special, special occasion. As we talked to this interview, it kind of made me reflect on the impact he's had on me and what I've learned from him. So I thought the best thing that I got out of this and out of our friendship is everything I've learned from him. My Wimbledon was a uh, wonderful experience, actually. Yeah, it was because it was cool. the first one, right? Yeah, yeah, it was the first time that my division um, was accepted into to the tournament. So it was really cool. We had been lobbying and, and requesting for probably six years, or as long as, as long as it's been around for wheelchair tennis to be a, a part of it. We had been pushing for it, and um, to finally see it come to fruition was like pretty, pretty awesome. So lesson number one I learned from David Wagner is, was, and always will be breaking down barriers. David breaks down barriers. Case in point is this year at Wimbledon. This was the first year that the quad division was played at Wimbledon. So in wheelchair tennis, there's a couple of divisions and one of them is the quad division and that is the division Dave plays in. And they kept lobbying and he kept fighting until that happened. And guess what? That gave him a chance to be a Wimbledon champion. He came awfully close this year and I'm sure he'll be back next year and of course I'll be rooting him on. So never let barriers take you down, blast through them. And that's what I learned from David. That's lesson number one. Venus, how was your Wimbledon? <laughs> <laughs> I'd you're, love to know. You're allowed to ask questions too. Oh good, well then, how uh, was your Wimbledon? You know, my Wimbledon was brief, but I got I got to you know support Serena, okay. got to be around my family. So you mm. played tennis before you were um, had your accident, mm. so you were already a tennis player. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I use that term very loosely when I say a tennis player. But you walked on I, at college. Right? I, I played at a community college. Mm -hmm. Uh, junior college in Walla Walla man I hit my first ball playing on the like trying out and I, I literally like I just fell in love with the sport I, I, I knew really nothing about it I didn't really watch it I didn't and this was in 90 uh, 93 right. and at the college that I went to in Walla Walla there was a another university there called Whitman College mm -hmm. and I befriended the security guard and me and my buddy Rory would play tennis until like three in the morning every night and we he'd turn the security guard would turn the lights on for us and we just battle. And we both we both were pretty crappy at, at it. <laughs> so we were equally crappy, so that made it made it fun. Mm -hmm. A year later I had my accident and then in ninety nine I learned about wheelchair tennis. Because mm -hmm. you start you started playing table tennis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Wait, are you stalking me? Yes. For a long time. <laughs> 
Thought you knew that. <laughs> I do now. Yeah. So so I I played table tennis in rehab because buddies would come up and we would we would just want to go do something and sit in the hospital room. And in '99, I was thumbing through a magazine called um, Sports and Spokes, which is kind of like Sports Illustrated for disabled athletes. Mm-hmm. And there was an ad for a wheelchair tennis clinic in um, Beaverton, Oregon, which was four hours west of where I was living in Walla Walla. And I just remember telling my mom, I was like, gosh, we got to go. We got to go check this out and just see what it's like. And literally, I sat at the service tee, just mm-hmm. right there at the service tee. And because of my grip, I couldn't hold the racket, right? And so every time I would swing and hit the ball, the racket would fall out of my hand. And I, I remember telling her, I was like, yeah, there is no way in hell a quadriplegic plays wheelchair tennis. You just can't hold the racket. And I was really fortunate. Yeah, when I went to to Beaverton to learn from three of the best in the in America for the sport, and uh, yeah, they they helped me immensely, and I owe so much to them for it. So tell tell me about rehab and and how sport, what role sport played for you in that. Uh, well, for, for for me, rehab was rehab after having like a spinal cord injury is really different from like if you blow out your knee or your shoulder or something, right? Because when you blow, do something like that, you're learning, try, trying to rehab a specific injury to get back to where you were. And, and rehab, as after a spinal cord injury, you're rehabbing not, not just to get stronger and, and tr- maybe hopefully get back to where you were, but if that doesn't happen, you're, you're trying to learn how to maneuver a wheelchair or, or transfer in and out of a chair or get in and out of a car. So it was, it was great when I first found sport in rehab because it allowed me an opportunity to feel like the athlete that I always felt I was. It really changed the dynamic of my outlook on, okay, I think I think I can be okay with this situation now because there is avenues to be close to back to what I used to be. And that, and that was such a, a huge uh, eye-opening experience when, it, when that actually like hit and I was like, wow, oh, cool. Lesson number two that I learned from David, he did not let anything stop him from living his dreams. And he's faced some of the toughest circumstances that you could possibly imagine in life. But actually, after that, he became a champion. He never lets anything stop him. He lives his dream and he lives life on his own terms. And that's all you can ask for in life. But you can't just ask for it. You actually have to fight for it. And that's what he did. And that's what he does. So... He's inspiring. It looks like it's hard to get going on the grass. So it's easier on the back side of the grass where it's um, kind of beat up the yeah. court. But when you get up in the, the lush part of the grass, it's tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you lose your momentum. And, yeah. yeah. It's a lot like the ball, right? The ball is slower and, and kind of dies in the, the greener stuff. Yeah, I'm always <laughs> looking to be strong. <laughs> Where's um, the bathroom? <laughs> over there. Oh, no. Oh, our pims have arrived. Oh, oh hey. <laughs> Mike Rose is a legend. He taught Mike me Rose. everything I know. Hi, Lou. Thanks, my man, Mike. Sorry, Hi, Lou. Like Hi. Hi. Well, I just called you? over there real quick. <laughs> <laughs> there's a fire. <laughs> there's a fire. Yeah, there's a fire. <laughs> it always works in the movies. <laughs> It always works in the movies. Go pull the alarm. Someone here? pull the alarm. <laughs> <laughs> so we got our pims, but yeah, we're have... apparently not allowed to have them on the court. So I'm not sure why. Oh, well. And our, you know, attempts to distract them didn't work. So. Didn't work. We tried. We tried. I still think there's a grizzly bear behind us. <laughs> <laughs> See it. What about the endurance that it takes? Because I was thinking about the endurance it takes yeah. to, to not only propel yourself, but also to get to the shot and have the strength and like, you know, yeah. to actually uh, hit it and be balanced and in control. Yeah. Because often when you get tired, you can't control yourself. Your mind goes, the body goes, everything goes. Yeah, I think for us, the difference is people, people see wheelchair tennis and I think they think of it as, as very challenging. And it is challenging. But when, when you use a chair every day of your life, it's the way you get around. And so you're very familiar with how to maneuver the chair. So, so it's almost second nature you know, or, or natural for us to just move the chair around mm-hmm. uh, and, and moving it on a court or in everyday life. I find you an inspiration. A lot of people find you an inspiration. Right. Thank you. And I mean, how does that feel like to know that so many people hmm. are inspired by you? Yeah, I, think, I mean, I think it's fine. It's great. Because I, I mean, yeah. Maybe I think I think people are inspired by you as well, right? I mean, I think 
think if we can motivate people to be a better version of themselves, I think that's a great thing. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that whether you have a disability, whether you're a tennis player, whether you just want to get off the couch and go for yeah. a longer walk, you know, I mean, yeah. if you motivate people to become a better version of themselves, I think it's it's an awesome feeling to, to know you do that. He inspires other people to be, quote unquote, a better version of themselves. And for me, there's nothing like getting inspired, waking up in the morning and seeing someone do something positive. I'm like, I actually, I, I want to be a part of that. I want to do that too. And that's how David makes me feel. And that's how he makes a lot of people feel. And like, I love what he said, that better version of yourself because that better version of yourself is something that you can work on every day when that sun comes up, better, hashtag better. And this is a bonus lesson number four because it was supposed to be three things, but number four is that David's actually a great friend. He always checks on me, he always shoots me a text. Even if I don't respond, sorry, it's a public apology, Dave. You never gave up on me and that's why you're such a good friend because through thick and thin, you're always there. So thank you, David. And that's something else I learned from him is how to be a good friend and, you know, never give up on anybody. But like watching you, I felt refreshed. Oh. Stop that. I Bless felt, you. <laughs> <laughs> I felt refreshed. I felt motivated. And I was like, I wanted to go play. Cool. And I'm always looking for that inspiration. I'm always looking for something that yeah. gets, gets me inspired and gets me going. And I, I found that with you, so thank you. Well, thank you. David is really inspirational to me. He doesn't let anything stop him from living his dreams. He found out he loved tennis and he became a champion. I hope this is inspirational for you as well and that whatever you dream, you go for it. Don't let anything anything ever stop you and you go ahead and live your best life just like David Wagner and just like I'm trying to do every single day. I'm so super happy that David took the time to sit down with me and took time out of his busy schedule at Wimbledon. Thank you, David. I hope that you'll come back on my channel again. So I'm looking forward to having even more interviews. I've got more in store for you guys. So please come back. Please subscribe, thumbs up, and get ready for next week. I have something really, 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 really special. And it involves Serena Williams.